Sarah was ten minutes late to the restaurant. Her friend Melody invited Sarah to lunch, but at the last minute there were some problems at the office, and she stayed for a while. Melody smiled when she saw her friend. You are late. It was more of a remark than a complaint. It can get crazy in the office today. I barely escaped. They spent the next ten minutes chatting idly, looking at the menu and placing their orders. So, have you thought about what I asked? Melody hoped her friend would agree. Sarah took a deep breath. This is madness. Do you know what will happen if you get caught? It was more of a statement than a question. Nobody will catch me. This is just one time. Bill will be out of town. We are going out of town to a place where no one knows us. Everything will be fine. The famous last words of everyone who has ever thought they were too smart to get caught. Melody giggled at her friend's concern. I know you're just trying to protect me, but I thought of everything. Bill will never know, and what he doesn't know won't hurt us. You're so damn confident in yourself. This will be your death. You know this, don't you? It is impossible to foresee everything in the world. You needn't worry. Everything will be fine. Sarah shook her head at her stupid friend. Maybe there will be, maybe not. Relax, Melody said. In any case, this is my headache. All I want you to do is provide me with an alibi. Bill probably won't even ask. But if it comes up in conversation, you can just tell him we had a good time and hope to do it again soon. She giggled at her own joke. That's exactly what I'm worried about. You won't stop at just one time. You say it's a one-time thing, but you'll do it again. Maybe with the same guy, or maybe with someone else. But you won't stop at just one time. Sarah was becoming increasingly irritated with her friend. You worry too much, Sarah. We go shopping together all the time. This time you will just go alone and we will meet later to register our meeting. They were silent for a moment. Sarah was still considering this request, and Melody hoped that she would agree. At that moment, Sarah noticed that the woman at the next table was watching them. A terrible sadness was written on her face. Melody and Sarah stared at the woman, one seeing the pain written on the woman's face and the other seeing irritation. You do not mind, do you? We're having a private conversation. The woman looked at them and did not answer Melody's call. In a quiet voice, she said, Perhaps I can help you with your decision. Let me tell you a story about a stupid woman. Once upon a time, there was one woman who had everything. She had a loving and handsome husband, two wonderful children, a job she loved, and a house that was home in every sense of the word. She had everything, but she wanted more. She became complacent and at times became bored with her life. She lost sight of what was important. There was a man where she worked. He was younger, good-looking, and knew what to say. They started going to lunch together. Lunches became longer and turned into dinners. Conversations became more intimate. Dinner turned into dancing. And soon enough, they were planning to get into bed together. It would have only been one time, but one turned into two, and so on until it became common for them to just sneak away and be together. She needed an alibi for all her overtime and Saturday shopping trips, so she recruited her friend to lie for her. The friend decided that it was none of her business and agreed somewhat reluctantly. She became sloppy, and then she was caught. Her husband was furious. She ran away from home, thinking that with time he would calm down, but he never calmed down. His friends prevented him from doing something stupid, but he declared war on everyone who knew about the betrayal. He told the husband of the friend who was providing an alibi for his wife, and the husbands of all the other friends who knew about it or who he thought might know about it. Soon the husbands stopped trusting their wives, and once the trust disappeared. The woman simply sat there, lost in her memories, shaking her head. She finally looked at Melody. One woman's itchy pussy ruined four marriages and caused four divorces. The irony is that even her boyfriend has moved on to greener pastures. She was left with nothing. Melody looked at the woman and felt sincere pity for her, but was sure that she was just being stupid. I'm sorry you got caught, but your mistake was turning it into a fling. I'll be more careful. 
It's just one time and done. My husband will never know. So it's okay. The woman looked at Melody with a look that could best be described as disgust. Oh, you misunderstood. I have never cheated on my husband. The woman turned to face Sarah. I was the fool who provided her with an alibi. After that, silence reigned at the two tables. The woman finished her drink, tucked a few bills under her glass, collected her things, and left. All this time, sadness did not leave her. Sarah turned to Melody and said, too quietly for anyone else to hear, I'm leaving. If you do this, it will be without me. I won't lie for you. With that, she grabbed her purse and left. Sarah thought that every minute she spent with her friend put both herself and her own marriage in greater danger. Melody was dangerous, and the price of friendship with her was too high. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. Sandra's visit to mom. I had just finished mowing the grass and was sitting on the porch relaxing and sipping a beer. My wife Sandra had left a few hours earlier to visit her mother. Sandra felt that her mother was getting a little weak and spent a few hours with her every Saturday afternoon. I used to think it was nice of Sandra, and honestly it bought me some time. Usually I had enough of my time and when she returned, I was glad to see her. Today everything was different. I hadn't finished my beer yet when Sandra pulled her car into the driveway. She got out and walked along the sidewalk to where I was sitting. Hi, darling. She had to stop at the foot of the stairs, since I was sitting at the top and did not move to let her through. Hello, Sandra. How is your mother? Well, she's fine, but I wish she'd be a little more active. Sandra, do you have an affair during your Saturday trips, as if to your mother? What? What did you say? Why do you think so? No, not like this. Look, I ask a question and you do not answer with another question. You answer my question. Only then can you ask a question. Or we can just end the conversation. So I'll ask it differently. Are you fucking someone? You could say Sandra is stuck. She could tell the truth and it would definitely be bad. She could lie, but it could end badly. Sweat formed on her forehead and she stopped breathing as she considered her answer. No, she finally chose denial as less risky, I think. Why are you even asking me this? She seems to be trying to figure out how successful denial will be. A person I trust told me about this. Sandra, you know that adultery is the only sin forbidden twice in the Ten Commandments. The Sixth and Ninth both prohibit it, and lying only makes the situation worse. In the old days, a woman could receive ten lashes for adultery, but if she lied about it, she received an extra three, because you need to add three to go from the sixth to the ninth commandment. Of course, I just made it up, enjoying torturing her a little. Well, I'm not lying. Well, who is this liar you trust so much? Your mother called to ask how you were. She said she hadn't seen you for a long time. Lily's Visit to Mom On Saturday morning, Lily and John Carpenter had a late breakfast. Married for seven years, they were still enjoying their time together, although perhaps the seven-year itch had already begun. Finishing her coffee, Lily said to John, I talked to my mom this morning and I'm a little worried. She just seemed a little... absent. A little absent? Like this? You know, as if she is not quite adequate. I think she never recovered from her divorce from her dad. They both said that there was no betrayal... They just grew apart, but I'm not sure I believe them. And she's only 47 now. She should be doing something. Fucking, if I can say that about my mother, I think I'll go see her tomorrow, take her to brunch. How do you think? I think it is a good idea. Book a table with Henry. She loves the place and it gets crowded for Sunday brunch. Okay, it's an hour's drive from her house, so I'll make a reservation for 11.30 and plan to leave around 10. The next day, about 15 minutes after Lily left, John opened the door. Lily's mother burst inside, closed the door, and not at all innocently hugged and kissed John. I think we have about two hours, she said, so quickly undress and let's go to the bedroom. We don't have much time, 
subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. About listening.